The Noosa headland is a surfer's mecca. The point breaks are famous around the world as perfect conditions for longboarders, with a breaking wave that stretches for hundreds of metres. Board riders of all ages and sizes take to the waves all round the year, with five entry points, meaning there's plenty of ways for everyone. One surfer who's decided to do things a little differently is Chris Diabortis. He's a stand-up paddle surfer. It's been around for a few years now and it's just taken the world by storm. Here in Australia and worldwide as well. One of the fastest growing water sports in the world. Some people like it, some people not, don't like it so much. Uh, you just try and find places where there's not too many surfers around. Once you're on the wave, it's pretty much like longboarding or regular surfing, except you use the paddle for leverage, you use the paddle to catch the waves, paddle for balance, and everything's done standing up, so when you finish the wave, you're still standing up. It gives you a beautiful perspective. And not only is stand-up paddle surfing good in, in the surf, but it's just good in the flat water for fitness, for kids, for women, um, for elderly people. Um, they're doing distance races now, so there's quite a, quite a few avenues you can get, get, get hooked with it, uh, and it's a good physical core workout. The stand-up paddle technique certainly allows Chris to spin his board quickly in all directions. Watching on is Chris's dog, Lani. Now give it a go, urges Chris. And this ever so obedient border cross Labrador jumps on board. Now getting out through the waves is one thing. After all, Lani has twice as many legs to keep her balanced. The real challenge is riding that way back into shore. More than once, she almost slips into the surf, quickly scrambling to regain her grip. Lani has been at this for six weeks now. Chris says he takes her out every day. Back in calmer water, she's ever so pleased for that thank you pat on the head. It's not only surfers who enjoy the waters around Noosa. The tranquil backwaters here are explored by kayakers like Kath Withyman. These waterways are so special, so much water around Noosa. Oh yes, lots of water, lots of beautiful waterways, lots of beautiful little inlets and passages, amazing wildlife, bird life abundant everywhere. It's quiet for a start, so no motor noise. You get to see all the wildlife and hear the wildlife, the smells. Uh, it's really good workout, it's great fitness, it's really easy, anyone can do it and it's just a, a fantastic way to really enjoy everything that there is to offer in the Noosa area. It's just amazing. Serene as these inner waters are, Kath assures me there are even bigger and better challenges out to sea. Out through the waves we head then, our destination the same headland shore break we've been watching the surfers ride. Now riding those waves on a surfboard is one thing, in a kayak is another. The ride is certainly fast and exhilarating, but at the end of all this are the rocks. And with nowhere near the manoeuvrability of a surfboard, that's exactly what I'm about to hit. This is a good way to break an arm or a leg. I'm lucky just to lose a hat. And a bit of skin. Up above the waves, one locally based master cinematographer has been capturing these images. Mike Middleton has specialised in filming out of helicopters, producing aerial images of the Noosa region that are used in promotional DVDs. Mike's helicopter camera work has taken him from surfing to yacht races. We've been using helicopters for filming purposes for about 30 years now. And we find the platform gives us the creative edge to use the landscape that we're filming as the canvas. The brush, of course, is the helicopter and the camera is the medium. So we can get some pretty spectacular results by combining the three forces together with a coordinated pilot. I find that the hand holding allows for more diverse and more controlled shots, even though some of the new computerized camera mounts are very good, some of them can't actually handle the serious 
torque turn g-forces that we throw into some of our shots as you'll see in some of our footage so we do very much uh, film as a hands-on handheld system and the results speak for themselves well often we'll take the helicopter and the camera surfing where we fly at extreme low level like the skids hitting the tops of the waves and we'll fly sideways or backwards tracking with the wave and sometimes the timing has to be impeccable if you're going to track in and film the surfboard rider for example so we actually get inside the tube with the surfboard rider and Noosa is such a fantastic location for doing this we know exactly what we're doing we don't take unnecessary risks and we fly within the limits of the machine and the skill level of the pilot and the camera and often we'll have to abort a shot if it's not right but sometimes when we get the timing perfect the results speak for themselves the art of the aerial cinematographer is to give the feel of the feel that you're being there, you're in the shot and, and you're part of it, so you can actually enjoy the moment. Filming the International Yacht Race off Noosa was a highlight of my career where we were actually trying to work as master cinematographers to create the feel for the viewer that you're actually part of the yacht race. So we start really close up at the back of the yacht and then slowly, slowly track back with it with a zoom to reveal the boat and, and the scene. And then as you track back and zoom without feeling that there's a camera movement, you actually feel and see that you're in an actual yacht race. Greg, we found some hidden families of Jabiroos here around Noosa and we identified where they were and on special timely days where the weather was perfect, we gently flew in with them without scaring them because we respect the wildlife and we've truly got some very very special moments particularly where the Jabiru actually goes into a glide and you can see that through some of this amazing footage that we were um, flying beside him in the sunset where the light was glistening through their wingtips while they flew over the Everglades the most amazing afternoon we had. The Noosa area, and in particular the Biosphere in the National Park, are truly special areas and it's no wonder that tourists come in their droves to visit it because it's the most magnificent part of the world. When next we travel Oz, kangaroos in the snow, we follow a mob of eastern grey kangaroos through the first heavy snowfalls of the season in the Kosciuszko National Park. On the Great Barrier Reef, the two teams go diving over pristine coral formations to discover an abundance of fascinating sea creatures. And our marathon road trip takes us from Uluru to Alice Springs, the mystery of Katajuta the Camel Man, and Dinky, the Singing Dingo. And that is this episode of Travelers. I'm Greg Granger. And we're, and we're the, the two teams. Happy, Happy travels! travels. <laughs>